Hi, my name is Juan Segovia from JuanLittleDevil.com. In this video, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about slicing in Ableton Live. I'm going to show you guys how I use this in my studio to record sounds from my hardware drum machines and then use that recorded sound to create um, custom drum racks. I'm going to go fairly quickly in this tutorial, so I encourage you guys to um, head over to my website and look at the blog posting associated with this video. All right, so let's get started. Number one is um, <clears throat> I'm going to pull a uh, track or um, yeah, a channel which I have already set up with uh, or configured to br to get audio from one of my external drum machines. So uh, let's see, clips. Okay, yeah, this one. This will get sound from my drum station. Um, and uh, to make this sort of quick and simple, I'm only going to pl play through the sounds from the 909, the 909 sounds of the drum station. So uh, the sounds, as you can see, are... Anything. Uh, oh, that's because it's going to the sense only. All right, so. All right, sounds like a 909 to me. Okay. Um, now we have something that will play sound, right? And then we want to capture it into an audio. So we're going to be recording this into an audio clip. And I'm going to set up um, audio input. Um, I guess we can we can either have it go directly from here, so drum station. Or we can get the external audio right. come directly from drum station. I'm gonna set this to record, and uh, I'm gonna mute this for now and. Uh, gonna play through just once all of the sounds I have a recording so recording that clip and then once it gets to the end I just stop it right and at this point we don't need this anymore because we've got our, our recorded audio all right so the next thing we need to do <coughs> is we need to clean this up a little bit, right? So I'm going to name this something like 9. And then um, <coughs> we can actually use either um, time intervals to do our slicing, or we can use transients, or we can use warp markers. I personally like using warp markers because I can set exactly where each one of those warp markers are going to be. Um, you can use the transients, but you have to keep in mind that if you use the transients, you have to go through all of them, delete the ones that you don't want, like this one, for example. Um, if I have two transients in here, then it's going to chop that into two separate slices, and we don't want that. Um, but you also have to make sure that your transients don't like actually start at the beginning of the sample. And this one, for example, it does not. It's like in between. So that's not going to work, right? So what I would do in this case is create a warp marker right there and you know delete that transient. All right. And then, you know, you go through each one and then make sure that you convert all of those transients into warp markers. And I don't know what's going on in here. And it looks like it might be starting off. Ah, uh, no, it's okay, actually. All right, so then the next thing is I'm going to crop this this uh, clip so that to get rid of this empty space here, right? Because if we're going to use the warp markers, that's going to be a cl uh, a, an, empty cli an empty slice, right? So we're going to move this over. It's actually on that marker. Delete that one. In fact, I can even 
say set to one one two right and then i'm gonna crop this crop All right so now we have a clean sample so <clears throat> slicing all right let's talk about slicing slicing is achieved by going to the contextual menu called slice to new midi track that's right click on the clip on the midi clip on the audio clip select slice to midi track now by default you get a series of slicing presets now you notice that um the create one slice per right it's a drop down menu that says warp marker transient bar blah 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 right okay we're going to select warp marker cuz that's what we said to find you know from the get go on our how we were going to sl slice that up slicing preset let's talk about the slicing presets slicing by, by default ableton comes with a series of slicing presets now i don't particularly find like i find a lot of them useful but i often find myself wishing for other functionality so i'm going to cover how you can make your own presets um to use so we're not we're not actually going to use any of these. We're going to make a new one. So I'm going to cancel out of that one. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, first thing you need is an empty drum rack. So we're just going to drum drop one in there. That drum rack needs to have a chain. And you're going to drop a simpler, right? You can drop a, a simpler or sampler if you want, uh, if you own it, you know. And um, and then um, we're going to map some things. Now, I'm going to change some things in here. I'm just going to go pretty quickly because you guys can change the things according to your likings, right? So this is how I like to set my things for drum for drums. So I'm going to set them that way. So you notice how I'm I'm setting some like I I changed the volume, you know, because I don't want it. I don't want my drum rack to actually play any lower than what I've recorded. Like I've already recorded it at the correct volume, so just play it that way, right? Um, and then I'm going to start mapping. I like to have attack mapped, and I like to have my decay mapped. And I'm going to change the values to kind of where they were before, um, right? Because it, you know, otherwise they're going to default to zero and you're not going to get um, you're going to get undesirable effects right so i think i also want to filter so i'm going to set turn that on and i'm going to map my filter frequency to that macro three and then i want to macro four i think i also want to map a filter type right i want to be able to select those right as you can see when i and then I'm going to map that one also to it so that that way when I am at zero, I'm going to put it to one. So that's when it's going to start, right? So what I'll do is once when I'm at zero, that filter is off. And at one, it turns on and then you can select these guys, right? By default, I'm going to leave it off. Then the other thing I like to have is um, I actually like to have this velocity setting mapped, right? And I like my number of voices to one because it's an individual drum hit, right? So cut some of the overhead off. And uh, the n other thing that might be useful for each individual sound is to have a way to detune them or transpose them. So I'm going to map the transpose to macro 5 and then the detune to macro 7. I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit here. So that pack okay. Those are okay. And let's call this pitch tune. This one was filter type. Okay. Now once once we've done this, we're going to rename this to something else like uh oh, before we forget when we mapped the pitch and detune, right, and also the velocity, we also changed the values to zero because that's what the macro started. So I'm going to change it back to its original, which was zero here. Right? 
and then I'm going to set this to 100%. Once I've done this, right, we can close that up. You're going to end up with an empty device rack that looks like that, just a single chain. We're going to take this and we're going to find our library. Again, that's our library. And in a default folder, there's a slicing folder, right? This folder contains other instrument or, or drum racks with empty chains just like it. And it's used to create those slicing presets. So we're going to put that there and we're going to call this something like um, my drum set. Right? And then, now that we've done that, we're going to go back to our audio clip and we're going to say slice to new MIDI track. And now in the slicing preset, we're going to find that my drum preset is in here. And we're going to use that one. And we're going to say go. So now we have a whole bunch, a drum rack with a whole bunch of slices, right? And pinch. I can hear this. I'm sure you guys can, but I cannot because the way of my audio is routed here. All right. So, right? Now, there is one problem with this, and that is that when I change things like filter or anything that I change in this macro, it's going to affect every single chain in this drum rack. And I don't want that. I want these controls to be individual to each one of those slices. So how am I going to, you know, how am I going to do that? Well, <laughs> with a little bit of ingenuity, you can. Um, and this is the way I do it. You select each chain, and then you select the simpler in there. And you, you, you group that, right? So you do a Command-G for grouping. And by default, you can see that when you group that, it retains the relationship between these macro settings here and these ones over here. But, and if you go through each of them and you start grouping all of them, and I'm just doing Command-G down, Command-G down, right? And you just go through all of them. You get to the last one, right? Now, all of these are mapped, right? I still don't have, I mean, now I have each one of them has their own set of macro settings, right? But these ones are still mapped to it. So I'm going to click on map mode here and I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to delete. So what that's done is it's freed up all of these macros so they can be remapped. So these are now empty macros. And then each one of these slices <coughs> has its own set of macros. And then I can go back and start renaming things. Like I know that this is a kick. And you clean them up. And I'm just going to fast forward a little bit here. So now we have all of them and they're nicely named, right? And so there's one last thing I like to do with my drums. And that's actually apply some choke, right? Um, because, you know, and you don't have to. But um, I actually like to have this sounds way off of, of each other, right? So I'm going to assign that to a choke, the hats, right? So that when the, op the open hi-hat is playing, if I play a close hi-hat, I want the sound from the open hi-hat to stop. And that's what the choke will do. All right, there you have it. Um, be sure to check my website. I uh, post regularly. Um, not always in the form of videos, but um, definitely stuff that is related to uh, music production. Um, lots of great little tips, tricks, sometimes little free downloads. Um, and uh, be sure to keep in touch. All right.